Hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everybody's doing well. We're back. And today I'm going to concentrate on uh, our remaining industries. But I just want to take a look here, see what happens if I were to level this area. It just looks so hot. Okay, it went up. <laughs> It went up even higher. You know what? I'm going to give up on this for a while. It's running. It's working well. Lots of people are coming into our city now. But this, I can't ignore this. The, the traffic in that area is pretty bad. So I'm going to have to come in and fix that at some point. But in the last video, I had mentioned that I set up forestry and oil, which were our last two industries. So I'm going to get them both up and running. And we still have to figure out where we're going to put these factories. All the times that I have ever used these, which has been often, believe me, because I really enjoy this aspect of the game, um, I always clumped them together. Like the unique factories that belonged to this particular industry, I kept them there. And I thought that that would help with traffic. But I don't think it does. I think with all of the trucks going back and forth in their specified area or dodging from one area to another area to drop something off and then coming back to get more, I think that is part of the problem. And I could be wrong. This is pure speculation here. So what I think I'm going to do is take all of the factories and either set them up in a specific area which I did try to do once but on that particular build I think we had a majority of those factories on that little island islet but the ore and the oil were right there across the river this time I'm thinking the strip where the ore is and our lower income citizens live, that strip that curves, I might put them there. I don't know. Maybe that's too close as well. I don't know. Staggering, I thought, would be a good idea, but I mean, you know what? We can try that. I think we should try staggering them. Putting the car factory in one place and... Well, the paper mill's kind of stinky, though. And we do have that whole industry area behind that high berm. Maybe we could figure something out in that area as well. Traffic's not too bad in that area, but when they come around the bend where the cargo train is, and then they come back up into the city, holy smoke. I think that might get even worse. I don't know. But, I mean, there's three ways. There's the tunnel. Yeah, there's the road back up toward the bus terminal at the entrance of our city. And then there's that third one going around. So I don't know why they all chose to go that way. I'm trying to figure it out because a majority of them are going back up into the city, the big city. They're not going into the little one that we created with the pedestrian area. But it's probably just me, you know, just not getting it. It's not clicking. I don't understand why this is happening. I'm just giving the fellas here something to do. And they have a very pretty, well, it's a little rapid, but they have a river there and a lake. So on their days off, they have plenty to do. Uh, and they can't get into town. I gave them a lot of parking. That was something that I've never really gone out of my way to do. I also got to get the busing going and set up the metros for this side of the map. I haven't done that yet either. And that could be another one of my huge mistakes. I'm holding off on transportation way too late till the, oh, oops, sorry, not until the last second, but and not as an afterthought either, but it's like I'm putting these guys where they belong and then 
I'm, I'm looking at other things and I'm not concentrating. I should be doing the, you know, I keep saying that. <laughs> you should get the bus routes up real early. And I never think that a population of 30,000 needs any kind of transportation. So I think our city alone has like, isn't it like 80, 85,000 people living in one city? We don't have buses. We had them, but they got rid of them. Anyway, beside the point. <sighs> this is a road simulator, so naturally that would take precedent over anything else. Okay, well, <laughs> I hope I wasn't too screwy in yesterday's video. I, this is what I'm saying. I do not write scripts. Um... It feels, not that it feels tedious, but it feels disingenuous. <laughs> Especially for videos like this. If I was doing like Nerd City or something, yeah. The right opinion, of course you're going to script, but these are just goofy me trying to learn how to play a game videos, you know, so I don't want to get too serious and technical. That's just the way I feel, so I'm sorry. So trying to compilate all of my thoughts into one cohesive flow is next impossible. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Yeah, see, traffic. And again, I, I'm kind of... Did I just say again? Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember that when you first start with these types of builds, you have to give traffic time to figure itself out and calm down. So I'm ignoring it at this point. And I'm pretty good at ignoring. <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at ignoring the obvious. No. Ignoring what isn't important at the moment. So here I'm just trying to figure out how to connect. Good heavens, how am I going to connect? One to the other. But I think... I did an okay job. I think it worked out rather decently. I did decide to just get rid of that because my thought process was that I was going to continue adding to the farm, but our farm is doing so well. And nobody's complaining about anything, so I think I'm just going to leave it at that. And then at a future date, if we do have to come back in here, there's plenty uh, to our left that we can work on. So I'm just trying to get as straight, <laughs> as straight a curve as I can. That sounds like an oxymoron. But I think you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, sometimes doing it yourself is better. I think it came out okay. I'm not too upset with it. But now that we have this excess traffic coming here for the cargo station, I think we're going to need to do something with that corner where they're all driving down to get in. And I opt for a roundabout. I do try to fix these as best I can, but we're not working on roads at the moment. I was just trying to get them over to the other side so they could access cargo and deliveries. So we're gonna have to add another. Yeah, see traffic is, it's kind of mucked up at the moment, but it does sort itself out, especially after we get down to the oil area. Everything just kind of clicked. So it turned out okay. I still don't know what the brain kidney like. Is that Oracle Lake or is it the one to the south there on our right? I don't know. Right now we're in our oil area. And this bugs me because it's so big. And I think I mentioned it in previous videos. I have a hard time plunking buildings down on top of the resource when you have machines that are going to be digging into that resource. So I'd much rather just put all of our oil drills where the light brown is and then have our buildings surround it. I know that's weird. Probably Sim City thinking. But I figure that's plenty of oil rigs for now. <laughs> and then I go down to the other end for all of the buildings. But stretching out your traffic is kind of okay as well. It uh, it gives them all a chance to get where they need to go. 
But I'm sure with time that may change. You never know. So, yeah, I do bring it down just so that I can do my building thing. <laughs> I know it sounds so silly. But I hope it makes sense to someone. I would much rather that my industry buildings were off of that oil field so that the drills can get to the oil. Why you would want a building sitting on top of a resource is beyond me. I'm, this may be overkill with the worker barracks, but I do this because in the past I've plunked down like maybe one or two and then I go away and I never come back. And if you want to gain your stars so that you can get all of the equipment, you want workers. That's one of the things that they strive for in the game. So the more worker barracks you have down, the more people are going to wander on over and start working here. Don't we wish real life was like that? <laughs> so the more barracks you have, the more workers will come in. And since we're doing so well on money, I know I've got the infinite symbol there. That had something to do with me. Oh boy, now I'm not going to remember. What were we having a problem with at the beginning? Skive and something Skive wanted me to use. Oh, the oil, the water, being able to mark more territory. We had an issue with that. What was I talking about? <laughs> I'm totally lost. Why was I saying this? I don't remember. So, uh, again, I just give them things to play with and... I end up making this a whole district, mining, oil, farming, and forestry. I just covered it as a whole district so that when I plop down my fire, medical, police, and death care, they would only service those areas. But because they're so far apart, some of them needed their own. So I have an over excess of garbage Death care, fire, and I think police. Sometimes I will get lucky and you'll see the police thing pop up. And you stare at it for a second and then it disappears. But not all the time. When it stays, I will go over there and say, okay, here's the police station. I probably shouldn't. But anyway, with the infinite money, that's what we were talking about. You'll notice it keeps going in and out. But we are making really good money. And the population is doing the same thing. It's fluctuating. One minute it's in the green and the next minute it's in the red. But it's never all that high. And you can see by our RCI meter that things are, well, they're like low mid range. So it's, it isn't all that bad. But, you know, what are you going to do? So real quick, I figured I would mention, I might be able to talk about it a little bit more in the next video. I didn't think I would have anything to say and then I'm rambling on and on. But the announcement was made today, well yesterday actually I think, that uh, CS2 is not using Steam. They will not be recognizing the Steam Workshop and they will not be on it. Paradox has created their own bank, if you will, where they're going to store your assets and mods. And the only difference being that if you're playing on console, you'll only have access to the assets, which are buildings, cars, things like that. And if you're on PC, you will have access to both. And a lot of people are... It's like a mixed bag of reviews on it. I am so out of the equation that my opinion really doesn't matter all that much. I don't know that I'll ever be able to play that game because uh, the amount of resources it requires on a computer, I am not going to risk it with mine. I don't want to take a chance on blowing up my computer for a game. But you guys are welcome to let me know in the comments what you think of that. Some people say that, well, that's just the way of the future. A lot of farming simulator games are doing it that way. And I kind of feel sorry for Steam, but 
other people were like, wow, that it seems like a smack in the face to the modders. But I, d I don't know if, if that's true, because the same modders who uploaded to Steam will be able to upload to Paradox. But I think they're afraid that Paradox is going to have too much of a hand in it. And they're going to yay and nay what they like and don't like. And I don't know that as dictatorial as this entire world is becoming, you know, maybe people won't find a problem with that. I certainly would. I don't want to live in a dictatorship and I don't want the government telling me what I can and can't think and do and say and act and that's scary communism. So so this is the outcome of our oil and uh, we're getting up there. I think we're already at three stars. So it's not too bad. But the basics are down. All of our industries are up and running. We're going to let them build up their resources, and then we got to go in with the big things. But we still have to fill out this neighborhood, give them more workers, go back to our original neighborhood, fill that out. Lots of work to do. But I do thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video and your continued support of my channel. Thank you. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're interested. Take very good care of yourselves. Have a fantastic day. Traffic looks bad. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.